What's up everybody? Back with another video. This time I'm coming with you with the New York Giants Pocket Pro helmet history. It's all Pocket Pro scale. Two inches high. All 3D printed. I printed all these myself. Painted on myself. Decaled them. I did everything myself here. Except for make the models. I give a big shout out to Simon Brockman who's an expert model maker who made most of these models. So we're going to start off, you know, the Giants have been one of the, probably the oldest team in the NFL. One of the oldest team with the Pack, Packers and the Bears. They've been around since the 20s. They haven't really had too many changes in their look over the years. But we'll start off with the very first helmets they would have wore back in the early 20s, which has been just a basic leather helmet. So this here is just a basic leather helmet. They would have wore. Doesn't offer a lot of protection. Let's see if I can zoom in a little bit. But this is something that the Giants would have wore. If you were around in the 20s watching them play, it's what you would have saw. Let's see if I can turn it a little bit. And this one here is pretty much an exact replica of a helmet you would have seen on the field back in the 20s. And there were maybe five or six different types of helmets through the years before the modern helmet shell started to come around. And I, I made a couple of those here. It's hard to, to get all the accurate information, you know, with black and white photos. If anybody has any more information, any helmets I'm missing for the leather helmets, let me know and I'll see if I can add those. So let's go on to the next one. So this here is just a basic leather helmet again. This is a, just a little bit of a different style. And you might have seen one player wearing one of these type helmets, you know. And they had different manufacturers back then like they do now. So you would have saw different versions of helmets out there. But they went to a solid blue helmet somewhere in the 30s maybe. And uh, this is a representation of that. Not much there, just a solid color helmet. It's pretty, these prints are pretty good quality prints. Great models. Then as time went on, players started, teams started decorating their, painting their uh, helmets because more elaborate fashion. And here's something similar to the Michigan wing they wore. You can see there. Try to zoom in a little bit. This here is all painted by myself. Hand painted. Came out pretty good. Not an expert painter, but I like the way this one came out. A lot of teams wore these back in the day. Pro college, the wing was a big, big pattern. You know, big, uh, everyone was uh, into it. I have a for my Longhorns helmet history, which I'll have sometime soon. I'm not quite done with that one. I have the Longhorns version they wore back in the day, which is very similar. It's the same helmet. This painted. These would have been hand painted back then. So no helmet probably was perfect. Or they would have had paint they would have had the leather maybe dyed and then sewed on. So there's a lot of different alterations that went on back in the day. So now, somewhere in the early 40s, the modern, the predecessor of the modern football helmet with the plastic shells started coming out. These offer more protection, but they didn't act have face masks yet. They hadn't really invented the face mask yet. So from, I don't know, a few years at least, this is what you would have seen in the early 40s, late 40s. Maybe even up to the early 50s, people would have been wearing these. I know somewhere around 52 or 53, a lot of players are going with the clear one bar face mask. And those started breaking, so the NFL outlawed those. And then Soon after this version of the Giants, you know, they didn't have a, a decal on their helmet yet. They started wearing face masks. You can see here. I can put that down. 
as you can see this here is a suspension helmet it's pretty much all the helmets in the early days that ride the LMA were all suspension helmets even though the helmets in World War II, the Army helmets had the same suspension technology in it and I guess that was the best technology going for the day. I don't know how comfortable it was to wear one of these. It doesn't look too comfortable at all but this is what they wore and they had leather caps on the ends. Like I said they probably wore this from the late 40s and maybe the early 50s. You have been seeing this all the, all the way through college football everywhere. Then everyone started adding face masks to their helmets and this is a Giants helmet from the you would have seen this type of helmet here from the, all the way up to the 60s. Now some had numbers on the front some didn't. This one here doesn't have numbers on the front for the player numbers. See it's pretty much the same helmet it just has the one bar face mask. Then they went to the two bar mask, which you'll see in the next one. And then on and on to the advancements they made over the years on face mask technology. But this, you can see the, this is a RK helmet, and you can see the detail in there, the air holes they had. So for 1961, to 1974, this is what the Giants wore. This is the version of their helmet with, they came out with the NY logo on the sides and the player numbers on the front. This is the, like I said, some of the earlier ones had player numbers too, but I think they might have been pretty inconsistent with those. But starting in the 60s all the way to the 70s is what they wore. Different versions, you know, you would have seen different versions. This is a Rydell version. This is the RK. And this is the version of Y.E. Tittle War. So in 1975, the Giants decided they wanted to switch up their look. Went with a darker shell. Added striping, a different stripe pattern. And a different logo on the side. Still a NY interlocking logo. But this time they went what was called at the time. And still is. The Disco Helmet. Or the Disco logo. This is not a very popular design. It only lasts a one year. 1975. And this particular helmet here. Is a TK helmet. And it's a suspension helmet also. It's a newer version of it. With a different face mask. As you see the face mask started to evolve around the mid 70s to what we have now. So from 1976 to 1979 the Giants switched up their helmet with this logo. The Giants logo with the underline which which is a helmet that lasted really with the Giants logo lasted all the way to 1999 but it was a they switched the stripe for the 1980 season so this one here was 76 to 79 which I kind of like this one better than the, with the, I like the stripe on the helmet a little better this is also a TK suspension helmet and see there so the, you can see the protection from the 50s all the way up to the 80s really didn't change very much. They had some helmet manufacturers that had added air air bladders and things to the helmets, but there wasn't a lot of head protection. And nobody reported concussions, really. They just got knocked out cold in the game. They didn't say anything about a concussion. It wasn't until the 90s, that late mid late 90s, everyone started realizing just how much damage these players were taking. So this might be the helmet everybody remembers. The New York Giants pretty much. Everyone that's about my age. 
at least from 1980 to 1999 this is what they wore through other Super Bowl years with Lawrence Taylor, Phil Sims, Harry Carson and uh, this one here is the Lawrence Taylor version this is a bikey helmet this is the exact helmet that he wore which is a bikey helmet a lot of players during the early 80s started switching to bikey helmets they became real popular especially with the USFL and uh, this is what Lawrence Taylor wore his same exact mask everything's the same the padding we see his number on the back that's a Lawrence Taylor Taylor version of that helmet but there's so many great players that played that era you know I could have chose anybody but I decided to choose him because I just like the way his face mask looked so we're gonna go to really the start of the modern era of Giants helmets I guess with the Rydell VSR4 which is one of the most iconic helmets designs ever made and this is in the year 2000 they changed this look they went back to the NY from the 50s and 60s and early 70s look but they kept the shell color with a lighter blue color the single stripe down the middle and that was about it and they've this is the helmet they wear all the way through to today except for on occasion you know they'll wear what's called a color rush which is this helmet here which it's kind of a modern throwback to light blue with the old 80s logos a single stripe this here is a Daniel Jones version of the Rydell uh, Speed Flex and these here I'll try to make them as accurate as I can and you can see those white decals these are what's called ghost decals and it's actually just a white on clear white print which you're using a laser printer to get a white print and I thought those I thought I bought the ghost decal system specifically for this this set here and uh it's gonna come in handy with a whole lot of future helmets no more trying to match the background you just print a white white decal and put on the helmet on clear it's very easy to apply and that's the color rush version of the modern day helmets here we have Eli Manning Maybe the best quarterback ever played for the Giants. I'm gonna say maybe Phil Sims. But you know, Eli Manning has ups and downs. He did win two Super Bowls. He's got his number on the front. These are also ghost decals. And last but not least, which is a version that I had to make if I was gonna make a Giants history with a Justin Tuck shut eye on helmet and this helmet here you can see the detail on this model very good model exact these helmets are exact replicas of the actual helmets same face mask same connection points and just to talk where he actually had another version of that mask which I'm not sure I've ever seen anybody wearing it Maybe the NFL, you know, they might have outlawed it. But this here is my New York Giants helmet history. All the way from the 20s to now. All 3D printed. Many hours of work went into making this set here. This is my first ever complete history that I've made with 3D printed helmets. I've got some other things, you know, I'm working on in the future. Now, I've been working on them for a while, actually. Let me show you a couple of things. I've been working on the WLAF helmets. Well, these are two that I have. 
San Antonio Riders, Barcelona Dragons. And these are VSR 4 helmets, but if you go back and look on the internet, look at old pictures of the WLF. That's the exact duplicate Dungar mask they wore. Most of the players wore back then. In the early 90s, this is a real popular mask. And I'm working on a complete set of these that I'll have out here pretty soon. And uh, that's it, guys. Just keep watching. I'm going to try to upload more videos. I've been kind of slacking on my videos. But uh, I got some more things coming out. I'm going to be working on a charger. Helmet History Next, all 3D printed. And uh, I guess I need 2020 versions of my uh, standard speed pocket pros, factory pocket pros. I've got new versions of all the group of five and some S FSC helmets that will be coming out to my website. So don't forget to subscribe, ring the bell so you get notified. Go to, go to my website. If you want to send me a message, you can send me a message through my contact form. You can check out all my helmets on my website. I got a lot of tutorial videos. If you want to try to make your own helmets, uh, join my Facebook group. You can join that through uh, through my website also. You can check me out on Twitter. You can link up through my Twitter through my website also, which is all available here through the links in the description below on this video. But thanks for watching.